Picking out a craft chair might not be as exciting as shopping for delicious yarn, but the impact on you can be much greater. The average American spends over 13 hours a day sitting, and those hours often include our crafting time. I mean, let's face it, most of our crafts entail sitting. Whether it's knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, sewing, scrapbooking, journaling, card making, doing pretty much any craft is going to mean that we're sitting in a chair occasionally for long periods of time. So if you're interested in learning about the research on different aspects of seating, debunking some common myths about our life in chairs, and getting some tips for choosing a chair that will keep you healthy, then keep on watching to find out about craft chairs and the science of sitting. Hi everybody and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. Today's show is all about craft seating and craft chairs. I had some requests over the past couple of years for this topic and when I started looking into the research on craft seating, I didn't find anything really. There's a little bit of information about there about sewing chairs, but nothing specific to general crafting other than that. So I basically had to get into the literature on ergonomics, which is the study of how people interact with furniture and equipment so they can do work or other activities more comfortably. So ergonomics is a pretty broad topic, but I think there is some great information that can be gleaned from that literature, which can be applied to our crafting. Now here, let me pause and talk briefly about the structure of the spine because really our back is probably the biggest issue here. I mean, think about it. After a long work day sitting at your desk, do you feel as refreshed as when you arrived at the office that morning? The answer is probably no. Spending much of your day in a seated position can leave your back stiff and sore. That's because too much sitting, while it might be relaxing, puts stress on the muscles and discs of your back and neck. This results in tightness of your hip flexors, which are in the front of your hips, and your glutes, which are the muscles behind your hips. And these are both important supporters of the spine. Also, the longer you stay seated, the more likely you are to let your posture slide. And slouching can cause the spinal ligaments to stretch beyond their healthy limit, and poor posture can strain your spinal discs. So spending day after day sitting can cause significant spine issues over time. So let me briefly talk about three regions of the spine that are particularly affected by sitting. The neck region of the spine is known as the cervical spine. This area consists of seven vertebrae, which are abbreviated C1 through C7, top to bottom. These vertebrae protect the brain stem and the spinal cord, support the skull, and allow for a wide range of head movements. The cervical spine curves slightly inward, sometimes described as a backward C shape. Under the last cervical vertebra are the 12 vertebrae of the thoracic spine. These are abbreviated T1 through T12, top to bottom. T1 is the smallest and T12 is the largest thoracic vertebra. These are the vertebrae which the ribs attach to, so they protect many vital organs. They are larger than the cervical vertebrae as they have to support more of the body's weight. And they have a limited range of motion. The thoracic spine curves outward, forming a regular C shape with the opening at the front. The lumbar spine has five vertebrae, abbreviated L1 through L5, which make up the lower back. The size and shape of each lumbar vertebra is designed to carry most of the body's weight. The lumbar spine has more range of motion than the thoracic spine, but less than the cervical spine. And the lumbar spine curves inward like the cervical spine and has the backward C shape. Okay, so now that we have a picture of what the spine looks like and how it operates, let's talk about some chair options. 
Modern chairs have become more comfortable and lightweight over the years, and there are many types of chairs to choose from. No matter how captivating a chair looks, knowing the pros and cons of each type is really important, especially if you're going to sit for long hours in that particular chair. So I looked at the scientific literature and what studies say about each type of chair and what kind of person might want to use or stay away from a particular kind of chair. Now first up is the stability ball, which is basically one of those giant rubber exercise balls. These became trendy as chairs about 15 years ago because they were supposed to promote posture and circulation. So the chair is basically just a ball that you sit on. It doesn't have a backrest, so this forces you to sit upright with your feet flat on the floor. The ball is also squishier than, and moves around more than a traditional chair. So this requires you to use your abdominal and back muscles to stay upright. The problem is that these types of chairs can often do more harm than good. It's easier to lose good posture when sitting on a stability ball, and the increased muscle action puts more pressure on the spine. Now, one of these balls is great for a quick workout, so you could definitely keep one tucked under your craft table. But most of us probably wouldn't want to spend a whole lot of time sitting on one of these balls trying to craft. Unless you're already in really good physical shape, these stability balls can actually exacerbate back spasms and pulled muscles. And anybody who has spine or joint issues should definitely avoid this type of chair. Another type of chair that was trendy back in the 1980s and 90s is the kneeling chair. This is kind of like a stool that has a downward sloping seat and your thighs are at about a 60 to 70 degree angle as opposed to a 90 degree angle when you sit in a regular chair. So your pelvis is rotated forward and your knees are supporting some of your weight. Several studies have shown that kneeling chairs do encourage an alignment of the spine in a, an ideal S shape. However, studies have also shown that they also cause more spinal shrinkage than conventional chairs and put more pressure on certain spinal discs, even though your weight is distributed more onto your knees and off the lumbar curve. So despite that, the spine is being more compressed on a kneeling chair. Some other issues that people report when using these chairs is that they feel less mobile. It's hard to move around when seated on a kneeling chair. And this immobility contributes to reducing the blood flow through the legs, causing discomfort. So the recommended use for these kneeling chairs is about 10 minutes at a time, and then get up and walk around. Avoid the kneeling chair if you are prone to back spasms, pulled muscles, or spine or lower joint issues. You definitely don't want to use this type of chair if, you've have, if you have knee problems, knee injuries, or have had knee surgery. Another thing to consider is that the kneeling chair can be tricky to get in and out of. So those of us who are a little clumsy or maybe a little out of shape might find this chair challenging to use. You might wonder, what about just standing up? I mean, some people like to craft standing up and you know, they have those standing desks that are the thing right now. So maybe we should just be standing and not sitting for the most part. Well, research shows that working upright does have some benefits. It can improve your posture. It can tone your abdominal muscles. It can increase energy and even reduce hunger. But there are also some negatives as well. Uh, being on your feet too long can inhibit proper circulation and adds pressure to your hips, legs, and spine. And this can damage joints and increase lower back pain. Research also shows that sitting down just a few times a day doesn't necessarily relieve these problems. Now, if you really want to stand up to do your crafting, the advice is to do it for about 10 minutes at a time and then walk around for a couple of minutes, then go back to your crafting. But you want to avoid standing in one spot for a long period of time, even if you're shifting from foot to foot. People who should avoid standing are those who have back pain, muscle spasms, or joint issues in the spine, hips, or knees. 
Prolonged standing puts a lot of strain on these spots and can cause more problems and pain. Also, use caution if you have poor circulation or varicose veins as standing in place can also aggravate these problems. Okay, next up is the saddle stool. This is an interesting type of chair and you may have seen your dentist or doctor or even hairdresser use one. A saddle stool has a seat like, shaped like a saddle you put, would put on a horse. Um, you straddle the chair with your legs on either side of it. You sit about t 8 to 10 inches higher than you would in a regular chair and your feet are positioned almost directly underneath your body or slightly in front of your body. The wide straddle stance forms a good support base for something like crafting at a table. Now most saddle stools don't have backs and this increases muscle activation in the abs and legs, much like a stability ball or a kneeling chair. The saddle also rotates your pelvis forward, which maintains the spine's natural curve. These chairs are pretty effective at preventing slouching and do have a lot of benefits like relieving back, neck, hip, and arm pain, increasing circulation, and reducing foot swelling, and improving balance. The biggest issue with the saddle stool is that they're very uncomfortable to sit on for long periods of time. You kind of have to train yourself to get used to them by using the seat a little more each day. Now research shows that some people take over a year to get comfortable using a saddle stool. And for most of us, that's probably too long and we're gonna give up way before a year passes. Now one thing to keep in mind is that men have to be careful about using saddle stools. Men often experience pressure or numbness in the groin when using saddle stools, so it's recommended that they use a split saddle stool, which has an open gap in the center of the seat. And many pr women prefer this style as well. Now overall, saddle stools are a good option, but it's recommended that you limit your time in them to 30 minute periods. All right, an even more popular type of chair I wanna talk about is the ergonomic chair. When you read something about sitting is the new smoking, uh, most of those studies looked at plain old office chairs, which are not that great. Um, most studies that praise the stability ball, kneeling chair, and saddle stool compare them to standard office chairs as well. However, ergonomic chairs might look like normal office chairs, but are customizable in various ways and are designed to support your lower back and promote good posture. They usually have good back support with plenty of adjustable features, which help you maintain a healthy sitting posture as you work or craft at a desk or table. They are a better way to spend time sitting, especially when paired with periods of standing and walking. In fact, ergonomic chairs are often recommended by physicians for people struggling with back problems. The thing is, most people don't properly adjust their chairs to fit their body. One 2012 comprehensive scientific review of office chairs found that after participants were given instruction on correct usage and posture, most of their musculoskeletal symptoms disappeared. So something as simple as training people how to adjust the seat for their height or telling them to relax their shoulders can work wonders in helping with back problems and joint pain. Studies have also shown that sitting correctly improves concentration, boosts creativity, and reduces daytime fatigue. Now ergonomic chairs are good for everyone and would be an excellent option for your craft seating. Now, what about something like a recliner chair? And here I'm not talking so much about crafting at a table, but more specifically something like knitting or crocheting. A lot of us have a favorite chair that we sink into and knit or crochet, sometimes for hours. Well, the thing is, unlike office furnishings, which tend to adhere to basic ergonomic principles, Home decor can be surprisingly bad for your musculoskeletal health. When people decorate their homes, it's all about what looks good, what fits in the space, or what matches the color scheme. 
with little thought as to how that piece might impact their body. Buying furniture, especially sofas and chairs, where you're gonna have an extended body contact, it should be kind of like buying shoes. You want seating that fits you as well as a pair of running shoes with the right amount of support and cushioning. Now in American culture, we tend to equate comfort with a big, squishy, plush seating experience in which we are swaddled, if not swallowed, by fluffy cushions and pillows. But sinking into a cushy sofa or chair actually can pull on your spine and pelvis, causing strain. And this is compounded by the effort required to get into and out of the chair. So if you spend a lot of time in these soft, pillowy chairs, you can eventually feel pain and discomfort. There are some manufacturers that make truly ergonomic, supportive home seating. They are mostly Scandinavian companies and their furniture tends to be kind of expensive, but there are some other options for spine-friendly furniture. And the main rule here is to look for firmness. I mean, not hard like a, a wooden bench, but firm cushioning that is supportive. According to researchers at the Rhode Island School of Design, you should look for one of two things in any furniture you buy. One, coil springs, which can sometimes be found in antiques and high-end furniture. Or two, look for a high foam density rating. Now, the density rating of furniture foam is expressed in a two-digit number ranging from 18 to 35. Actually, there is a decimal between the two numbers, which makes the density rating of number 18 foam a 1.8 foam. The more solid material the foam contains, the more it weighs, and the higher its density rating will be. So the bigger the number, the more durability and resilience you'll get out of a product. It's recommended that you get a furniture foam density rating of at least 2.4. This is a good quality foam cushion that holds up to everyday use and doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Couch cushions and pillows at this density point are great products, but if you want the best quality, look for products in the 2.8 to 3.5 density range. Cushions made out of this higher quality foam will have a much longer lifespan. They'll hold up to the same amount of use for longer than the den less dense materials. Examples would be seating from the mid-century period when styles were more tailored, slim, and firm. The Getz sofa from Herman Miller is one of the most well-known furniture pieces that was designed to support proper posture and avoid pain. But you will also pay for those ergonomic features. That sofa costs over $6,000. As far as recliner chairs, sitting in a chair that lets you sit back and kick your feet up can be helpful for people who spend a lot of time on their feet and for people recovering from surgery. But the key here is that the recliner has to fit you properly. If the chair doesn't support your lower back, then it could be doing more harm than good. Now to beef up the lumbar support in a recliner chair, you can simply roll up a towel and put it behind your lower back. Now, the biggest problem with recliners is that they encourage sitting too much. And oftentimes, exactly what we need to do is get up and move around more. So here's the deal. When you sit, you obviously use less energy than you do when you stand or move around. Research has linked sitting for long periods of time with a number of health concerns. They include obesity and a lot of metabolic problems like increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol levels. Too much sitting overall and long periods of sitting also appeared to increase the risk of death from things like cardiovascular disease and cancer. Any extended sitting such as at your desk, in the car, at your computer, or in your craft room can be harmful. 
One analysis of 13 studies of sitting time and activity levels found that those who sat for more than eight hours a day with no physical activity had a mortality risk similar to that caused by obesity and smoking. And this data was from over a million people. On the positive side, the researchers found that 60 to 75 minutes of moderately intense physical activity a day countered the effects of too much sitting. But other studies have found that physical activity didn't neutralize the negative effects of sitting too much. So obviously more research is needed on the effects of sitting and physical activity and health. And research is also ongoing as to how long you should sit or stand at work. And that goes for crafting or anything else as well. Just like anything, moderation is probably the key. According to Alan Hedge, a professor of ergonomics at Cornell University, the ideal activity ratio for a 30 minute period is this. Sit for 20 minutes, stand for eight minutes, and then walk around for two minutes. This rotation gives you the benefits of both sitting and standing without the painful consequences of doing either for too long. Now, before I get into specific chair characteristics, let's talk a little bit about posture. Now, when we were growing up, we were all told to sit up straight. And this was advice repeated through generations and based on the theory that anything other than a 90 degree hip angle places undue strain on the back. But it turns out that sitting at a 90 degree pelvic angle is actually harmful in the long run. 30 years ago, scientists first showed this by inserting needles into the backs of volunteers and measuring the amount of pressure created by various seating positions. They found that slightly reclining was ideal, placing the least strain on the back and minimizing pressure that could lead to back problems. And since then, multiple studies have confirmed that finding. In 2006, a team of Scottish and Canadian researchers produced direct visual evidence that sitting straight upright is not the best seating position. They used a new form of magnetic resonance imaging called positional MRI, which allows patients the freedom to move around during the test instead of having to lie down and remain still. They looked at 22 volunteers who sat in three different positions. First, a slouching position where the body was hunched forward as if they were leaning over a desk. Second, an upright 90 degree sitting position. And third, a relaxed position where they leaned back in their chair at a 135 degree angle while keeping their feet on the floor. The research team took measurements of spinal angles and spinal disc height and movement across the different positions. Spinal disc movement is a sign of strain where the weight on the spine causes discs to move out of place. And this disc movement was found to be the most pronounced with the 90 degree upright sitting posture. The slouching position caused the most compression in the spinal discs. And both of, both of these problems were seen the least in the 135 degree posture, meaning that the spine and associated muscles and tendons experienced less strain in this more reclined sitting position. When they looked at all the test results, the research team concluded that a sitting position in which the person leans back, opening up the angle between the thighs and the back is preferable to sitting straight upright or hunching over. In general, opening up that angle between the trunk and the thighs improves the shape of the spine, making it more like the natural S shape you see in standing posture. Other studies have found that reclining posture is associated with a reduction in muscle activity, meaning less fatigue, less discomfort, and less likelihood of injury. The biggest reduction in muscle activity is found in chairs that have a backrest that can recline between 110 and 130 degrees. Okay, so now I wanted to go over some specific craft chair options. And I wanted to give you this caveat. Unlike when I do reviews of things like knitting needles or ball winders or yarn swifts, I did not purchase all of these chairs I'm gonna talk about nor was I able to test them out personally. I live in a tiny town in the middle of a cornfield and we 
just don't have the office supply stores or furniture stores that I would need to go to to visit uh, to visit to physically test these chairs out. So instead, I've simply looked for reviews and recommendations for craft chairs online, and I'll point out which ones are getting recommendations and highest ratings across multiple sources. I encourage you to check these out for yourself if you're thinking of buying one. So here are some suggestions that I found for craft chairs. The first one is the Boss Deluxe Posture Chair. This one has a thickly padded back and seat along with good lumbar support. It also has a waterfall seat design, which means that the front edge of the seat pan slopes slightly downward. This curved contouring of the front edge of the seat relieves pressure on the back of the thighs and behind the knees and improves blood circulation to the legs. The waterfall seat design is also better for equal weight distribution across the seat pan. So waterfall seats are a good feature to have on your craft chair. The Boss Deluxe Posture Chair is well padded and covered with a durable tweed material. It comes in gray, black, red, or blue. The seat and back are fully adjustable, which is something you really want to look for in a craft chair. There's a pneumatic lift that you can use to easily raise and lower the seat height. And another nice feature is that you can adjust the depth of the back by moving it forward or backward to give yourself a custom fit. The chair weighs 23 pounds, yet is sturdy enough to hold up to 250 pounds. The only thing this chair is missing is a back that reclines, so you wouldn't be able to achieve that ideal, slightly reclined posture. You can get the Boss Deluxe Posture Chair on Amazon for around $50 with no arms. A lot of crafters probably prefer no arms so that the chair will easily fit under a craft table or a desk. And when you're crafting, you won't have any chair arms in your way. But if you like chair arms, this chair does come with two different types of arms. Here is what the chair looks like with loop arms. And this model costs around $70. The other kind of arms are adjustable, and here is what they look like. This one is around $75. Another popular crafting chair is specifically marketed for sewing, but of course you could use it in other crafting contexts as well. This is the Aero Hydraulic Sewing Chair, and it is definitely a high-end option. Like most office chairs, it has a pneumatic lift that makes the seat adjustable from 18 to 22 inches high. The back is lower than other craft chair options, but it has good lumbar support, and sewists say that they can work in this chair for hours in absolute comfort. It is a fashionable addition to your sewing or craft room with a number of different fabric pattern choices that are super cute and crafty themed. It also has a handy storage space under the seat cushion. You just lift up the seat cushion and in the seat base, you have a storage compartment for patterns or supplies or whatever else you wanna put in there. The chair weighs about 25 pounds and is sturdy enough to handle up to 250 pounds in weight. The Aero Hydraulic Sewing Chairs base is the same as regular office chairs with five wheels. So yeah, this chair sounds great. The only thing is that it's kind of expensive. Everywhere I can find it is the same price, $300. I've never seen it on sale or discounted at all, even at places like Amazon or Overstock.com. So it doesn't really matter if you get it from Amazon or directly from the Aero website. It looks like you're going to pay the same. The other issue with this chair is that it's only adjustable in height. The back is not adjustable and doesn't recline at all but it gets excellent ratings all over the place from people who wanna spend $300 for a chair. A third option that I kept running across for craft seating is the Boss Medical Stool. It is ergonomically designed to support your back and has four inches of padding on the seat. So it's getting high ratings from people saying it's super comfortable to sit on. On Amazon, it has a 4.4 star rating with over 2,100 reviews. The back and the seat of the chair are covered with soft vinyl upholstery, which looks very nice. People say it looks as nice as leather, and it's easy to clean with mild soap and water. 
It comes in black, gray, and beige color options. People who bought this chair say the padding is firm but cushy and the back support is great. Like other chairs, it has a pneumatic seat height adjuster that moves the seat from a low of 18 inches to a high of 24 inches. So it's got a wider range of height adjustments than many other chairs. Again, on the Boss Medical Stool, all you get is seat height adjustment. There's no back depth adjustment or back reclining adjustment. This chair is currently $57 on Amazon, and you can get the stool with no back for around $50 if you're interested in that. And I actually have a stool like this with no back that I use for sewing, and I love it, but I also don't do a lot of sewing. If I did, I might get a chair with a back on it. All right, the next chair is the Reliable Sew Ergo 200 SE, which is the top of the line in this brand. This is an ergonomic chair that was specifically designed for sewing, and a lot of other crafters love it too. It features oversized contoured cushions with thick foam padding. The seat is 20 and a half inches square, which is the widest of all the chairs I'm going to talk about today. It weighs 24 pounds and only comes in gray fabric. The Sew Ergo has full lumbar back support and a waterfall seat edge. It's made in Canada with over 60% recycled polyester material and is Green Guard certified, which means it has low chemical emissions. It also has a five year parts warranty and a two year fabric warranty. The best thing about this chair is that it is fully adjustable, including height adjustment, back tilt, and back height adjustment. The seat height can be adjusted from 16 to 21 inches high. One unusual feature of this chair is that it has gliders instead of wheels. The gliders are plastic discs that are actually more like a standard foot on a chair, only with more protection when dragging along the floor. They aren't really made for constant movement across floors. Um, wheels will give you much smoother movement. So if you really want wheels on your chair, you can easily buy and install casters on this chair. But the chair itself is a little pricey. It runs around $200. A set of casters is about like $12 or so. And a lot of people are putting casters on this chair to use instead of the gliders. The chair is getting an average of 4.5 stars on lots of different sewing websites, Amazon and Overstock.com. So people seem to be pretty happy with it. And it's definitely one that I'm interested in trying. Okay, the last chair I'm gonna talk about today is the Best Office Mid-Back Chair. There seem to be many sewists and crafters who are using this chair. On Amazon, it has a 4.6 star rating with over 500 reviews, so people seem to be pretty happy with it. This chair is covered with a durable polyurethane fabric, which is often referred to as vegan leather, and it's water and stain resistant and easy to clean. It comes in three colors, black, white, and pink, if you want a little pop of color in your craft room. The seat height adjusts from 16 to 19 inches, which isn't as big of a range as some of the other chairs, so something to keep in mind. It can hold a maximum weight of 250 pounds. It has about two and a half inches of padding on the seat, which people are finding to be ample for comfortable seating. The back has good support and is not adjustable, but the design of the chair is that the back reclines a little bit, so it puts you in an easier posture. The seat is 18 inches wide by 16 inches deep. It has a chrome base with wheels. Now, because of the smaller size and smaller height adjustment range of this chair, a lot of people are saying that shorter and more petite people will be happy with it. It may not be a good chair for someone who is taller. Probably the best thing is that the Best Office mid-back chair is extremely affordable. You can get it on Amazon for only $43. Now, something to keep in mind about all these chairs is that they all have pneumatic height adjustment. They all seem to support up to 250 pounds. They all swivel and move around the floor, either on casters or gliders. 
Also, if you order them online, they are going to come to you unassembled. So you're gonna have to put these chairs together unless you pay extra for the assembly service, if that's available. Oh, and I wanted to share one more chair with you. For those of you who are knitters, <laughs> there is a chair that was designed especially for knitters. It was designed in 1951 by a Danish designer and has recently been re-released as part of a series of classic furniture representing Scandinavian modernism. So this is the knitting chair that is available from the Menu Furniture Design Company. The chair features an oak frame with leather upholstery. It was designed with holes in the back to accommodate your elbows while knitting, but they could also be useful for someone reading a book or newspaper, or even when using a smartphone. Now in this special re-release, they only made 99 chairs, so it's a rare collector's item. And if you're interested, you can buy it from the Finnish design shop online, and the price is $2,575, plus $581 shipping to the United States. But they say it will arrive within a week. So there's a special knitting chair available if anyone wants that. Before I end today, I wanted to share some general tips for maintaining good health while sitting and crafting. And the first piece of advice is to set a timer to remind you to get up and move around. I think we all need a reminder like this. I know that the new fitness bands and watches have regular reminders to get up and move, but even when we're not wearing these, it would be good to have that interruption or else we just lose track of time and end up sitting for hours on end. If you recall the Cornell University ergonomic professor's recommendations, sit for 20 minutes, stand for eight minutes, and then walk around for two minutes, that would be the ideal situation. But at the very least, Take a 10 minute break from sitting every 30 to 45 minutes. Try to stand sometimes while you're crafting or watching TV. If you're coordinated, you can knit while walking around or knit on the treadmill or stationary bicycle. Remember that our bodies are not designed to just sit. So maybe we can try to change our thinking about sitting and start viewing sitting as a short, and cherished interlude between activities. And that's all I have for you today about craft seating, maybe more than you ever wanted to know. Um, I hope you found the information useful though. And now I'd like to hear from you. What kind of craft chairs do you have? Are they any kind of, uh, are they any of the ones that I talked about today? Um, do you find them to be comfortable? Or are you in the market for new craft seating? And what are you thinking about getting? Leave your answers to these questions or any comments and questions you have for me in the comment section below. You know I love hearing from you and I read every comment, even if sometimes I take a while to respond. And as always, I'll leave links to everything I talked about today in the information box right below this video for your convenience. Thanks for taking the time to watch today and I hope to see you next time. Until then, stay smart and have a sparkly week.